Howdy everybody, welcome to the shop. Thanks for stopping by, I really appreciate it. Well, as you can see, I'm pointing at the grill of my big Ford pickup. And yep, we got some vehicle maintenance to do today. We're going to be changing the front brake pads and uh, doing a little general inspection of the brake system. My ABS light came on and uh, I lost all my brakes the other day, so we're going to be doing some work on this. So, let's get started. Alright, first thing we're going to do is loosen up the lug nuts on this puppy. Before we jack it up. Yeah, I'm cheating. I got my uh, trusty <coughs> gun here. So you'll probably, as the video goes on, be hearing the compressor kicking in and out. It's going to go into reverse. <coughs> during a while. Alright, let's just loosen these up a little bit. That was tight. Now this is an added safety feature. I'm going to go ahead and leave my hydraulic jack in here, but right now all the way to the truck is on the, the white and red jack stand there. So and those are those are the type to use. They're the safety type. So let's get this tire off. Well, now that they're loose, I think we can use this to get them off real quick and easy. This is the part we're going to be working on here. We're going to be pulling this caliper off to uh, replace the brake pads. One on the inside and one on the outside. The uh, disc of the rotor here got a little groove at the bottom and at the top on the end and at both sides. I'm feeling over here and I can feel that little lip right there. So that looks okay. The thickness is still good, so I don't think we need to replace the rotor this time around. 
So let's get this puppy dog off. Okay, my Ford is a 99 F250. Now on this particular model, and I don't know how far across the board it goes, there's two bolts on the back side. I'm pointing to both of them top and bottom to hold the caliper in place. But before we do that, we need to squeeze the calipers back in. The, actually, the brake pads back inside the caliper. All right, got to do a little improvisation here, but we'll get it. We'll make it work. Got to use this clamp, woodworker's clamp, and I'm going to put a socket head in there to uh, act as a spacer. The only problem with using this on the back side here, I'm just on the back of the caliper. There's no way to get into that back brake shoe. I've already got the top of the reservoir off up in the engine compartment because what we're doing here. By pushing all these back in, we're forcing the brake fluid back up the line and up into the reservoir, which is pretty low to begin with, because these wore out pretty good. Let's pull these puppies all the way out. Turns loose with the ratchet, but it's still kind of stiff in there. Nope. Right. And there's our caliper. You can see these are the two cylinders here hope that's on camera that the brake fluid when you hit the brakes they move out this way to push the two brake pads together against the rotor against this don't leave this hanging you want to tie it up and find a good solid place to set it up you leave it hanging by the hose and you could uh, cause yourself some problems well there's still a lot of pads left on there Yes, there is. Let's compare that to the new one and see what they look like. Alright, kind of painted so it might be hard to see, but if you see this line over here, this is all the brake pad here. And this is about half of this, so we've got them off, we'll go ahead and replace them best thing to do anyway these already have the anti-rattle plates on them so that's good See that puppy just don't try not to touch that brake actual brake brake pad part make sure they're all the way in and seated so that you have an easier time getting the caliper back on there. try to put this back on right now with these cylinders being way out it won't go because the distance from here to here is a lot less than that distance right there so I need to get a block of wood and individually push these back in all right so you see I've got this block of wood in there and a the clamp on the back side and now we just tighten that up I can feel those moving in slowly I don't know how well you can see it on camera but I'll go ahead and finish doing that and we'll put this puppy back together. 
All right, you can see now I've got the cylinders all the way back in there, so this should go right back on there. There she goes. And there it is. Now I just got to line up those holes, grease up those bolts, and put them back in. This side's done. We can go to the other side. Okay, we've got some... Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. It's kind of clear, but we've got some high temperature grease lube on these bolts to help the caliper slide in and out when you're braking. So getting these puppies lined up and back in their spot is not always easy. You just want to get them started. See, I've replaced the torn glove. I like buying these gloves. I get them at Harbor Freight where they're relatively inexpensive for a box of 50. But when I always buy them two boxes at a time, last time I was there I grabbed two boxes stacked on top of each other and the top box was the right size and the bottom box without me realizing it was one size smaller. So I'm trying to use those up but they tend to tear real easily. There I got that lower one started now. Guess my left hand's bigger than my right hand. That's the, the large and that's the extra large and that other large that I had on is what tore. But let that be a warning to you when you go to big box stores or Places like that sell a lot of volume. If you're buying something that's loose, don't assume that everything in that bin is the right size. Because many times it is, and I can't tell you how many times I've gone to buy bolts and grab ten bolts that I need and get home only to find that two of them are the wrong size because I didn't look at each one individually. It's not always the customers and it's not always the employees, but when you're buying stuff out of a loose bin, and that does tend to happen. That stuff gets mixed up. And it's really not the store's fault. Because they can't hire enough people to keep their eye on every little single aisle constantly. Checking loose parts. So get in the habit of looking things over real good when you're buying loose stuff. Make sure everything is what you want and what it says it is. Because it not always is. So enough of that. All right. You want to tighten up the bottom bolt first. And those bolts are definitely starting to round over. I'm going to have to make a note next time to get new bolts. But that's it. In a nutshell. How to replace the calipers, the front brake pads, rotor pads on a 1999 Ford F-250 Super Duty, four-wheel drive. It's not that difficult. It's just a little bit of time consuming. It's a pretty simple system, simple mechanisms. I recommend you get the book. Get a book from either Chilton's or uh, other companies like that that produce those books. They tell you how to do stuff real easily and straightforward in a step-by-step -step manner. It helps non-professionals like myself. And, you're, and you, if you're not a professional, or if you are a professional and going to grade me on this, well, go right ahead. I don't care. <laughs> I get it done. If I can learn how to do something, I will, instead of paying somebody to do it. And when it comes to vehicle maintenance, that tends to be one of the things I, I do try to do myself instead of paying somebody. But only to a certain extent, because there are some things I just won't tackle. Anyway, thanks for watching. All we got left to do now is put on the tire. Drop this, go back to the other side, do the other side, but it's basically the same as this, so I'm not going to film it. But thank you for watching. Click like if you liked. If you didn't like it, click don't like. Leave a comment if you like. If you see something that I did wrong, point it out. I don't mind one bit at all. I like creative criticism. But uh, do please subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate that. So in the meantime, y'all have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.